Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha. Okay, it's time for me to go through my recycle phase. Um, this might take about <laughs> seven to ten days. Uh, for those of you who are waiting for me to do new stuff, I'm going to come back to that, I promise. But what I love to do is once I uh, react to a band or, or unravel a band as the decomposer, uh, I like to go back and start getting into it and representing to you guys because then you guys give me all these suggestions on what to listen to. And I still may not get to the one that you're saying that I should listen to, but hey, I got a whole lifetime to do this. And as long as you're having fun and hanging out with me and I'm having fun, we're doing this. So I'm starting this with, oops, stand by. Oh, yeah. Cable got connected there. Uh, Pusifer, Bullet Train to Iowa. Okay, so now I know this is Maynard and one of uh, three projects, let alone a few other uh, great artists that he's cameoed with too that I will be getting to as well. Uh, so anyhow, before I start, I want to thank all of you so much for your support, sharing the videos. Um, by the way, if you go to my YouTube uh, front page, please search, you know, the little magnifying glass search thing. You'd be surprised. Um, there's people who say, hey, do this band and do this, that I've actually done it since we're kind of having the same conversation uh, in this style of music. Uh, search through that. That'd be really super cool. And speaking of super cool, thank you all so much thus far who have bought me a cup of coffee. You know, the more I'm zooming, the more I'm doing. So I really appreciate it. Plus, it helps me out with the stuff that I do with the kids. The link for that's down below. The link for the music's going to be down below. The link for the headset's going to be down below. Everybody down below. Let's get ready to bring it up. All right, let's do this. Okay, this is loaded with some of the most um, creative layering in arrangements and composition um, that I've heard in a while. Now, I've get, I just got through doing some great bands that had some really, really progressive arrangements, you know, and every time I think I hear something that, wow, this they really went for everything they could, um, this bullet train to Iowa. Uh, I, 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 it's, there's so many little things, I, I don't know where to start. Obviously, first time listen, I get a little overwhelmed. And because I'm an old decomposer, sometimes I, I get like, oh, what should I speak about first? So 
bear with me for a second here. First of all, let's just talk, talk about the, uh, the opening. Okay, so obviously there are synths in here. Um, that they use uh, for the song and the arrangements and stuff. The one thing that caught me right off the bat was the fact that, uh, let's just go straight for the uh, drum sound really quick and some engineering. That snare that we hear has uh, a gated, kind of a gated reverb style uh, effect on it. So in other words, every time that snare hits, it sounds like the, so it, it, the sound of the snare hitting sounds like it goes off for about a third of a second and then cuts off, not heavily abruptly, but there's no like long style reverb. There's no, um, there's like no room or plate reverb uh, style fade to it. And right then and there, I knew that I was gonna be in for some kind of a rhythmic um, uh, journey here. When the bass line comes in, uh, it's it's pretty square. This is this is thus far as I feel a very square rhythm. So in other words, it's four four. You know, this is just there's no trick metering going on. But what gives us this illusion of the trick metering, or this feeling that there's got to be something uh, very unique happening there that, that than what we're used to, let's say in a standard style song, is that the bass starts its pattern one uh, an eighth of a beat in. So instead of you guys have heard me on some of my videos, where's the one? <laughs> where's that downbeat? Uh, you know, musicians, composers, you guys know what I'm talking about. For those of you who are just listeners and enjoy it, for those of you who are listeners and enjoy music, you kind of already know when you feel like, and it starts now. But when it doesn't start now, and the arrangement starts off a little later, it's going to give you that um, that counter rhythmic feeling like, oh, this, this is going to be really complex. It still is complex to make that decision. Um, so, of course, Maynard's performance is completely different in this project as it is in um, A Perfect Circle as it is in Tool. There are some beautiful swimming vocal arrangements that go around it. Um, there's answer back arrangements that are going around what he's doing. Um, the guitar... Uh, the, the, the chord pattern that the guitar is keeping, though it's very simple, very, very tasteful um, uh, chord changes. I, I'll, I'll finish with the guitar as I get through it, but the first thing I really wanted to address was how they set up with the rhythm, and which is, no, which is really no surprise to me considering that I'm, just by virtue, by the way, Maynard writes his... Uh, rhythmical melodic uh, arrangements that you know you're going to be in for, um, you know, anything but straight, you know, a straight arrangement. So uh, I know I'm missing a couple things. I know what else did I wanted to. Oh, and then there was, thank God for notes, then we noticed what sounded like this Indian style instrument, and it sounded like it was a sitar that was holding a little bit of a pattern. In, in that little section there. Um, I, I might have to go back to that. Well, I'm definitely gonna go back and listen to it after this, but there's a sitar in there that they actually drop in there. Really super cool arrangement. And it adds another element of, you know, uh, uh, of, of a journey. This is a very journey, well, bullet train to Iowa. <laughs> and then of course, you may have seen me kind of smirk a little bit because I try not to listen to the lyrics, but there's that thing where he says, choo-choo, choo-choo, so hence the bullet train from Iowa. Anyhow, let's go back and let me pick it up. Let me see what we got going choo, choo, choo.
that right there, that is so, so, so cool, that style of uh, arrangement with the voices. Um, you know, we've heard so many things in our course uh, of our soundtrack of life. You know, Bohemian Rhapsody, all kinds, you know, yes, and all kinds of incredible things that you could do with vocal harmonies, <coughs> excuse me, in arrangements and stuff. But I love when they take these kind of chances where there are answer backs to what, you know, in this case he's saying. Um, there's also percussive use of uh, the vocal arrangement. Uh, you may have heard, seen me react to that what, what, uh, 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 that they were doing there. And if you really listen to it, the, the area, the arrangement, the, the instrumental arrangement's really thinned out there so that this little passage that we just heard was really impacted more so by the arrangements of those vocals and those multiple layers. Another thing about Maynard's vocal, I mean, there are some, um, there is an effect on his voice uh, that, well, there's a couple of them actually. He's got what, we, what I call a straight digital delay. So there's a delay that kind of pings off in the back, but it doesn't do left or right. It's just right down the center. It doesn't do one of these things where he goes, hey, 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 it's, right down the center. And then there there seems to be like a layered compression section of his voice that gives him that kind of... I know some people say, well, yeah, sometimes he uses megaphones, that megaphone style uh, sound in there. But that sounds like it's layered below him. You know, at this point, you know, what's obviously different here in the Pucifer project than, than Tool is uh, the multiple layers that are going on here is is more prevalent and obviously uh, a focal point of the project in of itself is that all-out composition to make this sonic masterpiece kind of how they deliver it to us and stuff. Uh, the engineering obviously is fantastic to pull all this kind of stuff off. Man, you got to have an ear in placement, man, because it is just perfect. Perfect, perfect. Well, kind of, you know, that's kind of... You know, that sounds kind of critique-ish, but I mean, you know, when you're at this level, you're not, you don't suck. So I'm going to go back and then I'm going to finish this all the way through. Let me get back to here. That, uh, that ending, uh, the, the guitar right down the middle, um, that's something else that I didn't bring up, was the guitar, the, um, the fluctuating guitar tones in the layers. You know, the power chords obviously sounded different uh, and were a little more wider in the mix than something of this nature. This was right down in the middle. And what I loved about this, if, if, I am, if my theater to the mind serves me correct, it's as if, if the guitar was the, the train that was kind of slowing down or, or maybe coming to a stop. And those last vocals were very hard left and right. And it was like, whoo, sorry, <laughs> I'm not a singer. Um, so the, you know, the thing is in writing music for any composer, any arranger, any songwriter, the journey that I believe, and I, can, I speak very lightly of myself because I don't write many songs compared to just arrangements, is there's, there's, purposeful things that you do in arrangement to echo a lyrical, you know, the lyrics and the melody. Um, 
<coughs> another thing that uh, I thought was really super uh, poignant about the decision in engineering is during when all the vocals were doing what they were doing, all of the bigger sounds of the guitar that were behind it before that all came inside and all the vocals were allowed to take over the ambient space in the mix. That very wide sound. Um, obviously, if you're not listening to this through your earbuds or your headsets or anything like that, you can't really catch those dynamics. But to me, I think, you know, and also speaking towards the engineering and, and, the, and the composition and the arrangement, when somebody makes a decision and says, yeah, let's hit this really hard left and right and let's do this, it's because the total delivery of the piece of music is so much more thought up, thought of by engineers, producers, musicians, and um, uh, uh, and artists and bands than we un than a lot of times we understand. That's why a lot of these dynamics do slip away. Um, you know, if you don't get the opportunity to listen in, into a hi-fi system, if you're sitting in the middle of your speakers, you have this. So, and that's what I gush over. I gush over that because that is, that is just as much amount of time to mix an album like this or a, a song like this, all the arrangements, and have it dynamically so incredibly um, uh, uh, delivered as a final product. There's so much work that goes in there that, that the, 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 the fan who just enjoys the music um, doesn't really, in some cases, doesn't really uh, hear, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, anyhow, I just went, I just goobered on because this is my first cup of coffee. But speaking of which, thank you very much for those of you who have bought me the cup of coffee or might in the future. Uh, I want this song link will be below, along with the Spotify and everything will be below. I want to thank you guys for hanging out. This is going to be a bit of a journey of me recycling through a lot of music. So, uh, yeah, I've got, uh, I've got Tool, I've got A Perfect Circle, I've got Carnival, I've got Devin Townsend, I've got Nightwish, I've got just a ton of people coming. All right! <laughs>